Welcome back to Unity. I've got my pink cart now, and I want to try adding stuff to my game world. Let's give that a try with the aptly titled Adding Stuff Walkthrough. I'm going to choose not to save changes to my scene, but you, eagle-eyed viewer, may notice that after I do that, my cart is still pink. Why is this? That's because the material that we changed the color in is an asset which lives in its own file in the project. Changes that I make to the material will appear on every object that has that material assigned, even in different scenes in my game. Therefore, even though I chose not to save my scene, the changes to the material are still reflected. But in this case, I like the color pink I've chosen, so that's great. In walkthrough four, we're gonna add what's called a prefab to our scene. A prefab is another type of asset which we can create in Unity. We could think of a prefab as a prefabricated game object that's all set up and ready to use with all of its components and settings configured the way we want them, and then saved in our project as an asset for later use. Let's click Next to add one that's already been made for us to our scene. Like our material, a prefab is another type of asset which can be created in Unity. Because it's an asset, it lives in the project window, which our walkthrough has helpfully highlighted for us. Click Next. Now, we can click on our Building Short Prefab to select it. We want to make a copy of this prefab in our scene. You might also hear people say words like spawning or cloning prefabs. The technical term for this is instantiating it because what will be created is an instance of our prefab saved in our project in our scene. This process is as easy as dragging and dropping our building short prefab from the project window into the empty part of our hierarchy window. And there it is. Now, to get a good look at it, let's press F again with our cursor over the scene view to frame selected on our new building. If somehow it got deselected, just click it in the hierarchy to select it again. When we dropped our building in, it appeared at the origin of our world, its center. Maybe that's not where you want it. Let's move it elsewhere using the Move tool. Select it from the toolbar and click Next to continue. One easy way to move objects in 3D space is to use the blue, green, and red arrows which appear in the scene view to isolate movement along a single axis. Green is up and down, the Y axis, red is side to side, the X axis, and blue is forward and backward, the Z or Z axis. I'm going to drag my building a little bit forward by clicking and dragging the blue arrow to move it so that it becomes visible in the game view. You can see that as I move it, we can see the changes happening both in the scene view and from the player's perspective in the game view at the same time. When you found a nice spot for your new building, click Next. For fun, we could also try rotating or scaling our building using the Rotate and Scale tools. A quick pro tip is that you can cycle through these tools using the Q, W, E, and R keys on your keyboard. This is just like the Move tool in that we can either rotate freehand or click one of the colored guides to rotate around a single axis. I'm going to rotate my building about 90 degrees around the y-axis by clicking and dragging the green circle of the rotate tool. I'm not sure, strictly speaking, that the building really needs scaling, but since we're having fun here, I'll switch to the scale tool and drag the blue handle to scale it along the z or z-axis. Clicking the gray middle square here, and dragging also allows us to scale equally in all dimensions. With that done, click Done and run wild, moving, rotating, and scaling to your heart's content. In our next video, we're going to look at the process of building your game, which is where you take your Unity project and turn it into a playable application 
which you can share with your friends and family. I'll see you there.